Hello and welcome to another video about the Aventuria Almanac and this time I'm going to talk about the midden run, the big blue area here in the center and there is a more detailed map of this region in the Almanac. This one. Here you can see the different provinces of the midden run and I'm going to say something about each of them because their cultures are quite different and they represent different versions of midden, mid, medieval fairy tale kingdoms, so to say. We start in the west, in the northwest here with Albernia, the Principality Albernia. It is a bit like historical Ireland. With, um, the, it looks like it, the countryside, and also um, there are a lot of magical creatures, fairies living there. You will find such creatures in every pond, in a lot of trees. There is a, a forest, a Ferindel forest, where the powerful fairy Ferindel is said to live. And also the river father is very important, who is like the protector of the great river that flows from the central midden realm between the mountains to the west coast and where it meets the sea there is a very important harbor the the city of Havena which is the capital city of Albania and it's the most important harbor on the west coast for the midden realm and you can find people from all over Aventuria there The people in Albania are a bit rebellious. They, I think, more than once they tried to separate from the Midden Realm. Last time, something over ten years ago, but they are now again part of the Midden Realm. To the south, we have the Markravate of Windhag, which is a very harsh area to live in because what you see here is mostly mountains with a lot of forests and not a lot of people live there. They are either at the coast, only few, and a few more people live inside the land on the east side of the mountains. And on the coast you have a lot of pirates and fishermen and in the mountains um, few people live or not really people at all, but it's more the home of um, of bandits, there is an orc tribe that lives there, and you will fi find all kinds of creatures and uh, also intelligent creatures living there, and there are also a lot of west wind dragons having their territory in these mountains. To the east, there is the Duchy of Nordmarken, Northern March. This is an is a, is a traditional rival of Albania. There have been wars between them, and they are quite, from their personalities or from their culture, they're quite different from the rebellious Albania. They are very loyal to the empire, the administration of the of the empire is located in Nordmarken and they are yeah, very loyal in general. To the east you have the Principality of Kosh, which is the region with the most um, dwarves living in it. There is one quarter of the of the population is dwarves and this makes the Kosh the center of Aventurian or at least Midden Realmian craftsmanship. And also they are the region is known for a very famous beer, the Ferdok Pale Ale, which is brewed in Ferdok by the dwarves, and it is known over all over all over Aventuria. Then to the south there is the Principality of Almada. And uh, this is very like historical Spain, because to the south you have a simi simi similar situation. You have the Caliphate, which is like a bit like the Arabian culture, and this makes Almada kind of a melting pot of the two cultures, which 
can be seen in the architecture. Of course, there are Novartis living here, a lot of them, and the region is very warm and fertile. It's known for its wine and the horses, uh, and the people there in general enjoy life and are very close to the goddess Raya, which is the goddess of wine and orgies and fests and sexuality and love. And But also Almana is the center of the church of Boron, of the Punin uh, church of Boron, which has its most important temple in Punin, the capital city of Almada. Boron is the god of sleep and forgetting and uh, dead, death. And Punin is also famous for uh, Mage Academy, the, the Hexagon Academy, and it is said that the mages taught there are the most well-versed in magic. Then the next region is here in the north, one of the shield lands, that's the Margravate Greifenfurt. It is a very harsh area to live in, it's not very fertile, life there is hard and made even harder by the border to the Orc territory. There are a lot of Orcs can be found here raiding the, the area or in bands living as living as bandits in the in the forests and people here don't only have to work hard on the land to survive but they also have to know how to use their tools and weapons against the orcs to defend against them. And more than once the orcs have attacked the Midden Realm and then usually Greifenfurt and and Biden here are the first victims of their assaults and um, get hit very hard by the war. Next region is the center of the Midden Realm, the kingdom of Garetien, with the capital of the Midden Realm, Garet. It's a very fertile region. It is um, a very high culture, med- medieval culture, with uh, the knights that are jousting and um, are not so much warriors, but uh, fighting for honor and s- things like that. The capital city, Garret, is the biggest city on Aventuria. Um, if you you can basically find people in all kind of from all over Aventuria. You can get nearly everything in Aventuria, whatever you want to trade. Um, and it is said that all the roads lead to Garret, and the city is mostly under control of the bourgeoisie and the guilds and the citizens. The richest traders family, Störebrand, has its cap- its headquarters there, and also the most important temple of the prayers church, the City of Light, is located in Garret. There's also in the south of Garret a demonic wasteland, the Dämonenbrache, which is there since I think over a thousand years, thousand five hundred years. It is a dim- it's directly next to the city. It's a demon-infested march, and it was created during the first demon battle when um, the emperor of the old empire fought against the people of Garret who rebel who uh, had started a rebellion and wanted to separate from the old empire. And the, in the war, in the battle there taking place near Garret, the emperor of the old empire um, summoned a lot of demons and even arch demons, which are like evil gods or something like that, and they first killed everybody in the garage in the army, and then they killed everybody in the army of the old empire. So it basically was a defeat for both sides, 
and a horrible slaughter and after the 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 battle the um area where it took place was um cursed and under demonic influence and it has been ever since and well, of course a lot of um adventures take place in this area because uh, it's a very dangerous and no one goes really there and there are a lot of things hidden in this area then the next region is down here the principality pericum it is for pericum the seafaring is very important it is the main harbor of the eastern midden fleet in it is located in the city of pericum which is the the capital city of the principality and also the most important temple of the uh, goddess Rondra is located in Pericum, and the the Pope of the Rondra Church is located there. I think is living there. To the north, there is the Markravate Romulus March, which is not that old it has been created only recently because after the the Bobaret, Bobaret invasion there the land had to had to be restructured and the territories here changed and Romulus is very important place for the Travia church, the goddess of hospitality and family and so on. And a lot of refugees from the Eastern Territory have find, found a new hope there. Um, the area got a bit destabilized in the war and with all the refugees, but people are not giving up hope and holding the, the laws of the gods up and try to make the best out of the situation. To the east, there is the Margravate Raven March, which was founded as to to fight the the Shadowlands in the east, because the Raven Mark is named so after the holy um, animal of the god of death, Bogon, and directly in the east there was an empire of necromancers first. There was an undead dragon ruling over this territory, and after he was killed, uh, a council of necromancers took over and reigned over this region. And of course, um, they had a huge army of undeads, and the whole land was um, transformed in a demonic ritual so that everybody who died there would rise up as an undead and be added to the undead army of this territory but recently this territory has been freed from the necromancers that ruled it it is still very much under the influence of these undead necromancy powers um, and there are still a lot of demons and undead roaming the area and it basically needs to be cleaned up uh, part after part one step after another Yeah, that's uh, the Markovate Varunkai, this former necromancy uh, territory. Then there is the Markovate Sun March. This is a territory around the city of Bailung. And Bailong was the only city in this region that has not been conquered. The whole region was in the hand of the of Boborat and its its followers, but the city Bailong down here could not be conquered because it got protected by a wonder of prayers, a miracle of prayers, um, which prevented the the influence of magic in the whole city. And it, as it was a coastal, is a coastal city, it could be supplied over the, the sea 
although it was dangerous, it was possible. And so during all the time of the invasion and after that, while the territory was with the Shadowlands, Bailong was still a free city protected by a miracle of prayers. And today the sun mark is part of the of the city again and ruled by the city. To the north there is Toprian. Toprian is what is left of the Toprian that was nearly all the territory of the east here. It got pretty badly hurt by the invasion of Bobrat because all the territory got conquered except for a small part here in the north. And this region has also been freed now, the same as the Sun Marge and the Varunkai. And they're trying to re-establish order. There's also a lot of influence of demons who are still roaming the territory and a lot of magical evil power. Um, it is a lot smaller than it was before, especially as this part here is still in the hand of the followers of Bobarat. It's still part of the Shadowlands. It's called Transilian. Its capital is the former Isilian and is now called Yolgomak. It is a city in constant change and the city is basically alive. The the, the houses change and this is all due to demonic powers at work here. And the last territory is the one up here, another one of the shield lands, um, the Duchy Weiden or Meadows. It is known for its cattle breeding and for its very powerful and rich um, cattle breeders who are constantly fighting for territory where they can uh, let for the for the cattle and it's also a territory that is that holds up a very traditional uh, night traditional image of knights because the knights here are needed to defend against the orcs so they see them mostly as um, uh, as fighters uh, the lead fighters and the 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 region in general is not so advanced as other territories in the middle middle realm and it's a very traditional region so i think i've been now through the all of the middle realm the video was a bit longer than i usually would want it to be but i thought putting everything in one video video made sense and so if you have any more questions then uh, feel free to ask, uh, write a comment, I'll try to answer. Elves, thank you for your attention and goodbye till the next video.